Hi, everyone. Hope you're having a wonderful Friday with such wonderful talks. Uh, I'm Kawi, Blockchain Lead at Jigstack. And today we're going to talk about governance, uh, more specifically, next-gen governance and how to get there. So in this talk, we're going to have three sections. First of all, we're going to introduce the topic and contextualize a little bit better for you guys that are not so in the loop. Uh, then we're going to do an overview on what forms of governance are there and how you can employ that in your project. And lastly, we're going to talk about next gen, what the future holds and what we can brace ourselves to see. So first of all, the intro on me, uh, I'm a Brazilian Spanish developer. My background is electronics uh, and data science, but gradually more and more I've been involved in blockchain and for a couple of years now I've been full-time blockchain, stuff enough to, it's a wonderful ecosystem. And uh, recently, earlier this year, I joined Jigstack. Uh, Jigstack is a conglomerate DeFi DAO, which means we have multiple DeFi products that are all governed by a DAO. And there I'm the blockchain lead. So governance is a pretty recurring uh, topic in our project. So I hope you, we can share some cool things with you guys. So first of all, the concepts of governance, uh, the Merriam-Webster definition is pretty much just saying how you move forward with an organization or country or anything that involves managing uh, more uh, features, more products and people. And going into the word decentralization, it comes from the decentralization, a uh, French word, uh, started use, being used in the 1820s during the French Revolution. And I was quite surprised on the research that uh, it took some time to actually get into technology. So it went through a whole flow of being more social political, then use it in market and then fiscal, then environment. And when it gets to technology, it's pretty tough to separate the concept from blockchain, right? So it's pretty clear when Satoshi Nakamoto came up with the uh, white paper for Bitcoin that's completely decentralized, it's governed by the community and discussed in forums all around the world. Uh, it's pretty tough to dissociate that with the topic of governance. And from day one, crypto is governance and decentralized governance is blockchain. There is no technology better to manage that. So in the next few minutes, we're gonna talk about the forms of decentralized governance, some resources that you guys can look at after the talk is over, uh, some use cases so you can base yourselves off of and uh, what the future holds, like I said, and uh, all the resources, these slides are going to be released um, offline for you guys to take a look more calmly later on. So overview, we have currently basically two different forms of governance, off-chain and on-chain. We'll do a, a deeper dive in each one of those, then compare side by side. Uh, first of all, off-chain governance is the longest form of running uh, governance in the ecosystem. It's been used by giants such as Bitcoin and Ethereum. Ethereum is a very good project for you to base uh, off-chain governance off of. And it can be implemented today with any ERC-20 compliant token, so it's pretty accessible for everyone. Uh, the pros are it's easy to implement, like I said. There's more control to the dev team, so it's not everything directly mingling with the protocol, so you can have more control. Uh, it's potentially more private as well, because since it's happening on off-chain, uh, you can have some privacy if you want to, if you choose to, and requires less security from the point of view that it's not something that's directly using functions and uh, the, the protocol itself. So uh, the you don't have to be that rigid with security. And the cons are, uh, usually there is a slower rollout cycle involved. Uh, there is more control to the dev team. That's also a con because there are some occasions that the dev team might just uh, oppose the choices of the community and it might backlash and so on. So it's not that aut automatized. Uh, it's potentially more uh, less transparent as well because it's happening off chain and people might overlook a few things. And this is also potentially more socially bureaucratic. So that means uh, people who have higher influence in the ecosystem or followers and so on, they can tip the balance of the voting and the decisions to their favor and not really the favor of what's best for the protocol and your project. 
Some good resources, uh, resources for you guys to look at is snapshot.org. It's definitely the best resource out there for basically a plug and play integration into any token. Uh, so holders can vote on decisions. This is used by giants such as Uniswap. And talking about Uniswap, uh, I've also linked a good post that talks about their governance process. Not necessarily because it's off chain that it's just a simple process. You can have different layers to it and taking a look at Uniswap and what they do is a good basis. And of course, Ethereum governance is also a good thing for you guys to look at uh, because it's a, the longest running relatively because you can argue that Bitcoin is more mature, but Ethereum has a very fast development cycle. So all the EIPs and so on, how that works is very interesting to read up on. And I've also compiled a, a medium post by Noah that sheds a bit more light into uh, off-chain governance. Moving on to on-chain governance, it's a more modern form of governance and it's based off either protocol, the protocol itself like Tezos does, or uh, the smart contract system that a project has like Compound, Synthetics, or Make Your Doubt. And it brings an extra layer of automatization and compliance and transparency to your project. So that's the big pro. It's way more decentralized and transparent. Uh, there's more room for modular expansion. So you can build up on some smart contracts regarding governance that you already have without having to upgrade all that and so on. Uh, it's less dependent on the dev team, meaning um, there is more work related to actually shipping the, it out. Uh, shipping the governance out, but once that's out, uh, a good portion of the processes are uh, directly being shipped to on-chain. So uh, it depends less on devs. Uh, there's a quicker turnaround time and that time is also, it's usually right, usually quicker. And that time is also deterministic because the own proposals already have a time associated with it. So uh, yeah, that's gonna happen. Or no, if the community votes not to, right? but it's deterministic, the time frame, And there's less room for hard forks because once your community is able to change your project on the protocol level, it doesn't really make that much sense to fork it. So it's a good security on that. Uh, the cons are there are more development involved, definitely. Uh, it takes a way more time and requires way more security. So you really need to make sure that the audits are in check and all the security analysis that your team is doing is on point. Uh, it's less, uh, there's less participation, especially because it's usually more expensive, especially on chains like Ethereum. So users, in order to delegate voting power of, or directly vote on proposals, they'll have to pay for gas. And this kind of push some people off, right? Because they don't, don't really care that much, <laughs> honestly. And uh, it's also potentially more monetary plutocratic. So people who ho hold more tokens can mingle the balance on their favor, can tip the balance on their favor, right? And not the, what's best for everyone. And uh, some protocols like MakerDAO, they try to bring a more quadratic model. So it's not always the whales that are doing the calls um, and it's more democratic, but even that has some fragility associated with it because there are some mathematical exploits that people can do and turn a voting power of $14,000 to 200 by just spending in different accounts, paying a lot of gas fees and trying to do some flash loans and so on. It's, when people really get in there, they can break stuff. So there is not only the, the level of security you have to do with the code itself, but also the architecture and how the mathematics works, you have to account for that. Some good on-chain resources. Uh, the first up is ERT, ERC20 Votes, uh, the library from Open Zeppelin. Uh, they released this last month. It's very fresh and it's based off Compound's governance and it's practically plug and play. You can just take the library, customize it as you wish. It's something that we've used at Jigstack and I totally approve it. Uh, Open Zeppelin is awesome. Uh, then I've also linked here the Compound governance docs uh, that explains way in more detail and it's definitely a very interesting read. And, but it's also more developer oriented, so it might not be for everyone. So I also put the medium post that Compound team did explaining their governance in a more high level and more friendly manner. 
So that's very interesting. And also a wiki post with more details and trivia and what people think about on-chain governance, people like Vitalik, for instance. So definitely a good resources for you guys to look at. So in a higher level, off-chain governance is balanced snapshot based off-chain. It's usually slower and more controlled. There are more points of failure. So because it's so slower as, as well, and if a dev is out of the office for whatever reason, and the, the community wants to implement that, there's not much you can do, but it's also more accessible. While on-chain governance is either protocol or smart contract based, it's faster and more decentralized, and there are less points of failure uh, regarding humans as a whole, but uh, it requires way more security and development. So there's this misconception in the ecosystem that on-chain governance is better because it's more modern, it's using more smart contracts and novelty and so on. But is it really better? And as with everything in life, uh, what's better is what suits your project and particularly at that point in time of your project. It's not something written on stone, right? You have to account for your development capacity. Uh, developing governance in your project shouldn't take away from developing your actual project and right, what you're bringing new to the table. And you also need to get your community ready because uh, if you go to the garage, spend months developing your governance module and so on, but your community never had this contact with governance, it might just blow off, right? And have very little adoption. And of course, you also need to structure the governance internally in your project. Who's in charge and what's the flow of implementing changes and so on, and react fast. Like I said, it's not something written on stone. Uh, you should listen to community feedback always and adapt to it. So I was talking to one of the Illuvium devs uh, and they are implementing governance and so on. And we were discussing what would be the best option for them. And I was, I think it's interesting to bring that case over to the presentation because it's probably where most projects are. They wanna bring the governance, but how do they do it, right? So my suggestion was set up snapshot.org for your token associate a multi-sig wallet to that. And that wallet is only for the community, only for the decisions that are coming from snapshot.org. If you associate that with a vault, uh, something like uh, Gnosis Safe or Open Zeppelin Defender, and also step four, put the dev wallet in there as part of the multi-sig. It also gives a way more security and protection against some bad decisions, potentially bad decisions and it doesn't take the control totally of the, the dev team, but it also turns the whole governance and shipping process way more decentralized and robust, right? So this is what I would suggest for most projects. And yeah, let's go into what's the future then? What's next gen? So I just brought two examples. Uh, it's not necessarily everything, but uh, the first example I think is the most trending one is cross-chain governance. And by that, I mean governing in multiple chains. It's way more associated with on-chain governance. Both, both next-gen concepts are more associated with on-chain governance. And the second one is decentralized DevOps, which is having your community help you out on shipping new versions and implementing new features and tweaking parameters. So cross-chain governance needs to be verifiable, on-chain data only. Uh, the level of security across multiple chains should be very similar, if not the same. And it should be modular because nothing guarantees that uh, next week you won't have the community wanting to integrate another chain, right? So doing a lot of work for one specific chain is not really that interesting and scalable. Some problems and solutions that we have to face to come up with, come up with our solution is problem. Moving data back and forth from chains is complex and expensive. So one solution is either uh, directly putting uh, data, embedding data into your token that's going to be transacted across chains or use Oracle system. So uh, a lot of conversations here on Chainlink on the, the Smart Contract Summit are getting to that. So it's very interesting. I'd say using Oracles is usually a little bit more expensive, but only for now, right? For the future when things are more scalable, it might not be. Another problem is different networks might have different paradigms and regarding consensus and data. 
So a solution is to create a single global governance module and only create aggregator interfaces for different chains. So you don't have to be upgrading your core uh, module uh, for e each new chain. So uh, one example that we did at JigStack is the token JStack. Uh, we already have our governance token stack that's being created on DEX and centralized exchanges as well, and has that monetary value of only a share of, of the project. But we came up with JSTAC, which is kind of a wrapped token. It's not necessarily a wrapped token because the usual flow isn't that applied. But instead of going to a smart contract, doing something here and emitting another token that's equivalent to this one, it's going through a whole system of smart contracts that are controlled by the DAO, by the community, right? So it's non-monetary. You can't list anywhere. You can trade it. It's specifically for governance and it's kind of similar to to miles point and so on and it embeds governance data directly into the token and by doing that we can leverage existing bridges like the ethereum matic without having to develop anything new for that and it's all without control so it's robust so an example is uh, we have a product that has longevity multipliers it's emitting jstack based on how much stack people are using, but based off other parameters that the product is also judging and uh, giving back to the community that it kind of makes more sense. And not only for the whales, right? People who put a lot of stack tokens won't necessarily get that much JSTAC compared to someone that's aggregate, uh, it's bringing more value to the ecosystem as well. And it's been around for with longevity multipliers and so on. Uh, about decentralized DevOps, uh, usually it involves governable changes such as parameter tuning or new implementations and releases of the contracts. Uh, it's very imperative to have some multi-sig integration so you can have more control and more security on your side, on the developer side. And hands-free, should it be hands-free? Uh, usually on the traditional system, DevOps, we try to automatize everything, but it's not really uh, that important here. It is important to a certain degree, but it's really important to also get the devs involved and not be hands-free. So decentralized DevOps, uh, we usually use controllers, which are interfacing contracts that actually do the changes to the protocol. So this uh, controller module, it's isolated from the core governance one. So it can run automatically and um, by its own, the testing and all the compliance it needs to actually push some changes to the main uh, protocol. So that's very important and trying to modularize everything makes everything more smooth. Uh, it's also testing is very important and I'm not just talking about unit testing. I'm talking about something that I'll link afterwards um, about actually on-chain testing and kind of using flash and all like contracts to, to do the upgrades and the checking to make sure everything is running before shipping. And of course, monitoring. Monitoring is very imperative in the whole ecosystem and for decentralized DevOps, it's even more important. And you can use a lot of tools for that, but usually we use proprietary ones. So some good resources for uh, next-gen governance are uh, the EIP Diamonds, uh, which is a paradigm of developing smart contracts, kind of a standard that's way, way, way more modular and upgrade friendly. But at the same time, it doesn't have that much uh, usage still, uh, that much adoption. But it's really interesting. If you're a smart contract developer, you should definitely check it out. Check some example contracts, some hard hat libraries they already have. And for decentralized DevOps and bringing governance and also upgrades together, that's kind of a golden standard. There's also a scholar paper that we base JSTAC off of. You should give it a read. It's a scholar paper, so it's long and a difficult language, but it's definitely interesting. And there's for a little bit more friendliness. Uh, I also brought the Oceans Protocol uh, Governance Plus Upgrade Flow. So it's a medium post, you can read up on that, it's great. And a very, very interesting medium post is from uh, the USDC V2 upgrades. Uh, how do you upgrade a protocol, uh, a smart contract that's worth billions and billions of dollars? 
So it's very interesting to see they, their take on that. And they used a lot of flash loan like rollout systems to do all the checking to make sure everything's 100% correct before shipping. So some conclusions, we went over with some, what the types of centralized governance are, uh, what are the pros and cons of each one. Uh, I brought you an easy way to get started. So feel free to steal this flow and improve on it. And uh, we also talk about the future, what can we expect and some resources so you can do your homework if you want to. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, if you have any other questions, feel free to reach out to me on my email there or my Twitter uh, at Kawi underline tech or join the, the Jigstack Discord to talk with the community and so on. You can download the presentation at b.ly slash nextgen decentralized governance, dgov. And yeah, it's been great. Thank you so much, guys. I'll uh, see you in the next time. Thank you so much, Koei. Uh, I really do think that governance is one of the biggest topics in blockchain this year. And I, I think it's going to continue being one of the biggest topics next year it's, uh, throughout your presentation, as we saw. This is something we're still trying to figure out. And there's novel new ways of doing this. Uh, and I, I love that you didn't try and make a pick a winner between on-chain or off-chain governance. I thought that was great.